Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. It is episode number 143 of the Knife Junkie podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. Our midweek supplemental is now both audio and video, as you see if you're watching on YouTube. We have uh, started doing the uh, Sunday interview show, uh, just uh, uh, video and audio only, but uh, we have uh, kind of made that full transition, dragging me, Bob, kicking and screaming <laughs> right. into the video world. Yeah, well, uh, we've had a lot of uh, traction with Thursday Night Knives and a lot of fun doing Thursday Night Knives the way we do it, uh, like a live uh, television or you know, uh, news production. And uh, it, it seems to bring out the best in us. And uh, we thought, why not just bring that into the supplemental world? That's right. That's right. So uh, bear with us. This is our uh, our first full uh, video production as well, but uh, we're also uh, still doing this on audio as well. But if you do watch on YouTube, you'll get to see uh, some additional things like some of the Knife Life news stories that we go over and some of the pictures and those kind of things. But uh, coming up on today's show, we're going to uh, kind of recap this past Thursday night's Thursday Night, Li- uh, Thursday night Knives, which uh, had the monthly Knife Junkie Patreon Knife Giveaway winner. Now, normally we do that on the third Thursday, but uh, Bob decided to go to the beach this this yeah. month in August I, for the third Thursday. I was vacationing like a lord. It was awesome. That's right. So uh, we held that uh, last week, which was the end of August. But uh, this, uh, this month, September, the uh, third Thursday is September 17th. So we'll uh, be back on the monthly, uh, the regular third Thursday uh, drawing for the knife giveaway. But we'll talk about the winner. We'll also uh, talk about Bob's hike knife. He took a, uh, what, eight-hour hike or something yeah, like w- that? Yeah, it was an eight-hour, eight-mile hike. Yeah, it was Ooh. pretty intense. Oh, my gosh. We'll talk about that. Maybe you're still recovering. Uh, knife Life News coming up today. We're going to talk about O-Stop Hell. Strider knives and Hinderer XM24 and a new slicier than ever sheep's foot blade. And also uh, state of the collection, Bob actually traded in a knife for something that he's been wanting to get. So we'll hear about that as well as a brother-in-law birthday knife and um, some shifts in collecting habits, if you will, for the knife chunky. So yeah, a little, about, Bob. little bit of introspec- uh, inter- introspection. That, why does that sound strange to me? A looking, looking inward. <laughs> I was going to say a little looking inward and, and noticing some different uh, 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 different uh, some shifts in my uh, in my acquisitiveness and my desire mm-hmm. for new knives. Uh, so yeah, I want to I want to I want to hash that out just a touch. No, See if okay. anyone else right. is going through this kind of midlife knife crisis. Oh no, midlife yes. crisis. Mm-hmm. Yes. Midlife knife All crisis. Right. Well, we'll get to that coming up shortly. But uh, first, want to recap Thursday night knives. Uh, this past Thursday, the end of August, August 27th edition, I was actually out of town, but I still watched it, Bob. I thought you did a great job running host and producer and checking the comments and doing all that. It was a good show. Enjoyed it. Yeah, well, thanks. It was a lot of fun and uh, a little bit stressful, I noticed, uh, <laughs> uh, hosting and directing. Uh, for, for work, I do a lot of live directing of television stuff, and, and it's one of my favorite things to do uh, on the job. So to mix that in with this, uh, two of my favorite things simultaneously, it was a little jarring, uh, but it was fun. And everyone uh, was uh, was patient trying to, I was trying to do the graphics uh, right. as well as talk and switch the cameras. And, and there were some blunders, but everyone was pretty cool about it. All seemed to work out well. I can't remember who said it in the chat, uh, something about, you know, you were doing fine. Don't need Jim. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm out. Of, I guess I'm <laughs> yeah. out of a job. <laughs> well, no, I, I took that as someone's trying to pilfer my producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am open for hire, folks. If you're interested. <laughs> hey, but one of the highlights of the uh, Thursday Night Knives uh, is the Patreon knife giveaway, and uh, yeah. you gave away a beautiful knife this past Thursday. Yeah, we did. We used that uh, random wheel again, Jim. Uh, Uh, Jim discovered this wheel. You can put people's names on it and it spins the wheel. So you have something to look at while the algorithm is choosing a random uh, winner. 
but so we had the uh, the winner of the Gentleman Junkie um, August uh, Patreon right. giveaway, and it was the dog head version of the K bar knife. And um, if you haven't seen that, it's in the mail now. I, I, I would have loved to have shown it right here, but uh, right. it's uh, it's different from a regular K bar in that it has a, a, a stouter shorter guard it's got a long guard on the bottom and a short guard on top so you can kind of put your thumb more easily on the back of the blade and then it has this great uh sort of extended pommel that acts as a bird's beak at the end of the at the end of the knife so if you're swinging mm -hmm. it'll it'll grip your hand a little better but also it's a it's a bigger surface you can use it as a hammer if you have to like hammer in tent stakes or something like that so mm -hmm. a beautiful knife stacked leather handle which is always a treat uh, and uh, so yeah, so that headed out to Reed. Reed is uh, is the name of the gentleman who won that knife. And uh, right. next next month it's the um, Pentagon XR, the new SOG Pentagon XR, which is which is a a, a pretty sweet knife. Uh, I'll show mm -hmm. that off next time. And uh, that was donated to us by Stu from Stone and Steel right. up in right. Uh, Vermont. Right. Yeah, and uh, all you have to do to be eligible to uh, win one of the monthly knife drawing giveaways from the Knife Junkie is just uh, be a member of the Knife Junkie's uh, Patreon group at the $10 a month level, and you'll be entered into that uh, drawing. Uh, again, every third Thursday of the month on Thursday Night Knives, the live show that's on YouTube and Facebook and um, maybe Twitch or another platform. We uh, are still looking at... Uh, where else we would like to uh, stream the show. So if you have a favorite venue that you like to watch stuff like that, uh, shoot Bob an email at bob at the knifejunkie.com or uh, give us a call on the listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487, and let us know where else you would like to uh, see the show. So Bob, uh, last uh, end of last week, uh, you had that eight mile uh, hike. You, mm -hmm. uh, you survived. I did. I did actually. I, I did pretty well for an old man. You know, uh, it was <laughs> it was me and my my buddy, the same guy that uh, we almost got eaten by a great white shark couple uh, last week. Uh, so we went on this hike. For you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we brought our daughters again, and man, I could not believe. So this is it's old rag. It's a it's a uh, it's a pretty uh, challenging hike in the Shenandoah uh, Park, and uh, it's it's an eight mile loop. And you're going mm -hmm. up a mountain with all these switchbacks and stuff. And then you go across this long, mile-long rock scramble. So you're like going over big boulders and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you're climbing back down or hiking back down. But it's a pretty steep uh, hike. Incidentally, going down is, is harder for me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, down the hill, harder on my knees. Uh, but yeah. anyway, of course, going up. Uh, by the way, uh, before I continue with the knife part, I have to say our daughters are warriors. I cannot believe uh, how well they did. There was a bit of... Uh, oh, they went with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. There was a bit of complaining, as you would expect from a ten-year-old girl on an eight-mile hike. Uh, but they were excited to be together, help each other, help. You know, we were helping them get over certain rock features and stuff, and it 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 uh, was a blast. Um, but as you may imagine, as I was getting ready to pack my little backpack, I just had a real small day backpack. I was agonizing over what knives to bring. Oh, what should I bring? This is an important decision. You know, this is, I could be trapped out there for weeks. You know, if something goes wrong, who knows? I need a knife. Oh. And so uh, I did something, uh, Jim, that I will, that I hardly ever do. And in my front right pocket, I carried a, I carried a three inch blade. That's right. I brought the bug oh, out. No. I was that like, seems... you know, <laughs> okay. So at first I was thinking maybe I'll bring the, uh, the four max that Jimmy Slash gave me. And obviously that's too big and too heavy. It's like, okay. Maybe the Cold Steel 8010. Okay, still too big, too heavy. And I kept doing that until finally I was like, why don't I just bring the damn bug out? That's what they made the thing for. You know, it's for backpackers. It's small, thin, light, and I have a micarta handle on mine, so it's even stronger and cooler. Uh, so pop that in my pocket. And uh, you know what? I didn't pull it out once except when, uh, you know, to fidget with when the girls were off in the woods, we're leaving them <laughs> and we're standing around talking. So, you know, I didn't really need it. I also brought a, uh, <laughs> two other knives just in case. Cause I imagined, you know, what if something does go down? I'll have to supply a knife to Kurt. I'll need another knife. So I brought the SOG seal pup and, uh, and I also brought the, uh, the old cold steel recon one XL just in case, uh, 
didn't need any of them. And uh, thank God, right? And but, you don't have any of them nearby to show off, I'm sure. Uh, you know what? Uh, that's not going to happen again next week. But I, I will tell you that whole that whole um, devolving scale of things I wanted to bring started with this. I'm like, every man mm. needs a Bowie on him when he's out in the out in the wilderness. You know, this is this is what they would have carried when men were men. You know, 150 years ago. And then, of course, I was like, "There's no way on earth, even if even if I could." carry that thing, bring it with me. I would never survive the ribbing by my friend. I would never hear the end of it. So I decided, of course, um, the sensible, uh, sensible choices. Oh, okay. All right. So more uh, knife carrying hikes in the future for you guys? Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, my buddy's uh, gearing up to do uh, some uh, Appalachian Trail. So he wants to do a lot more of that. And I'm always happy wow. to go on a hike and jump in the woods. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, fun activities for sure. Uh, let us know what knife you like to carry on your hikes and adventures out into woods. Again, uh, shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com. Or better yet, we would love to actually hear your voice that we can play on the podcast here at 724-466-4487. 724-466-4487. Coming up next, we're going to get into our Knife Life News segment. And then, of course, to wrap up the show, Bob's state of the collection, where we're going to talk about him actually, heavens forbid. Oh, no, he did. He traded a knife. He didn't yeah, sell right. one. He traded. So, you know, it's not quite the same as selling, but he <laughs> traded. Got right. something that he really wanted. So we'll hear about that. Maybe but, I'll sell the one that I get in the trade. Oh, well, you never <laughs> no. know. I doubt it. Knock, I really knock, do knock. doubt it since I know what you got. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Knife Life News is coming up next. Ever start looking for your next knife purchase before your last purchase has even arrived? Then you're probably a knife junkie. All right, it is time for uh, Knife Life News here on the, the Knife Junkie podcast. We're going to talk O-Stop Hill, Strider Knives, and Hinderer. Bob, where do you want to start? Uh, I want to stop with O-Stop Hell. Uh, he, uh, stop. I want to start with O-Stop <laughs> Hell. Um, he was a guest on the show, uh, and what a great guy, and what unique beautiful and uh, somewhat menacing designs he comes up with. I, I always look for a, a tad bit of menace in, in even the simplest of knives. Uh, and he creates some really beautiful, graceful things. Uh, he's best known for the metamorph, I would say, the front flipper. Uh, beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, but here we are looking at his new, uh, his new knife coming out called the Ivy. It's coming out through Best Tech. And uh, it's the second in his sort of botanically themed uh, folders coming out. Uh, the first one was the Tulip. Now this one, uh, the Tulip was a smaller uh, uh, Warren Cliff. The Tulip is a larger, well, at uh, 3.07 inches, it's not that large, but it's a larger than the Tulip knife. It's a very slight hawk build uh, knife with a beautifully sculpted sort of organic and botanical looking handle. I don't know how else to put it. And it's anodized in uh, some gorgeous colors. Uh, it comes in S35VN blade steel, and uh, it is a front flipper, but uh, apparently they have it. He designed it so that uh, if people call for, or if Best Tech calls for a regular flipper, it's sort of, it's already, uh, already kind of baked into the design. He can just sort of attach the flipper and not have to do much else. So apparently it was inspired by creeping ivy vine, which is something I really relate to considering I'm battling it all, uh, except in the winter, I'm battling it all year round here. So uh, yeah, uh, ivy inspired. And the funny thing is the green one is called the poison ivy, uh, which, which I can of relate course. to too. <laughs> of course. Yeah, kind of nice, uh, nice looking lives. Let's do a uh, full screen of that. Uh, kind of like the, um, um, I was going to say metallic, but it, it's kind of almost looks metallic. It's got that uh, shiny kind of finish, if you will. Yeah, it's uh, anodized, anodized those yeah. colors. And it's a frame lock. It's titanium, uh, which is a step up from uh, aluminum. If uh, if you look at it a certain way, I, I kind of actually love aluminum. But, yeah. uh, you know, in terms of strength and lightness and, 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 uh, well, being able to charge more titanium is better. There you go. Charge more. <laughs> Let's get yeah, to the bottom right. line. Isn't that what it's all about? 
All right. Uh, Ostal Pale, who, of course, was a, a past guest on the uh, Knife Junkie podcast, just go to thenifejunkie.com slash listen, thenifejunkie.com slash listen, and you'll find all the podcasts right there to, uh, to binge listen if you missed any of those. All right. Somebody that uh, we don't talk a lot about here on the supplemental. In fact, I can't remember the last time Strider Knives came up, Bob, but uh, totally new design from them that we're going to yeah. talk about. I think Strider Knives last came up when I bought my uh, SMF from from uh, Zelric. I was talking a lot about Striders mm -hmm. then. Wow, but you know what? Wow. Never a response to an invite email, so I'm not talking about him anymore. No, I'm just kidding. I'd love to have this guy, uh, Mick Strider, onto the show just to talk about, um, you know, his his storied past. And, you know, I mean, he's got one of the, the um, you know, most uh, emblematic knife brands out there. I'd love to talk to him. But anyway... Uh, it's a rare thing that he comes out with a new design and uh, a new production design. And uh, but indeed he has it's called the KRT. Not sure what that stands for, but it's a Persian style Tanto. So it's a beautifully upswept uh, Tanto blade with a with a big fat belly. It's pretty cool. And uh, belly, yeah. yeah. And then it's got a uh, you look at the handle and it looks kind of like um it looks kind of like the handle of an SMF in a carnival mirror. You know, it has all the same notches in all the same places, all the same jimping in all the same places, but um, the, the, uh, a lot of the surfaces are bent and, and a little more ergonomic. Looking at this handle, looking at this knife, it looks as if it's forcing you to use the generous uh, choil there to make it comfortable. I can't imagine having your forefinger back in the finger choil on the handle. I, I, it would fall out of your hand, it looks like. But um, in any case, this is coming out in full titanium, which is uh, which is a little different from their usual thing. Usually it's a titanium lock side and then an, uh, an integral G10 handle, meaning it's the G10 uh, side slab and an integrated uh, backspacer. So it's all one piece. Uh, this time they're doing it out of titanium and uh, it has a reversible clip, which is rather interesting. Uh, you know, after all these years, a reversible clip. Why? Uh, <laughs> and remind me uh, what that means. Reversible clip can. Well, does I mean, that mean you it can go take, on either side. Yeah, you can take the clip off, put it on the other side for people who like to carry it in their left pocket. Gotcha. And uh, if my sister were listening, she's a lefty. I, I would be teasing her about being a lefty and how it's less than ten percent of the population. So why put some big ugly holes on the left hand side? But of course, that's all just me joking and ribbing. Uh, the upswept Persian blade to me is the thing that is really, uh, you know, unique about this thing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see this coming out. I mean, it's supposed to be a production knife, so people are going to start gobbling them up. Now, you know, uh, this is an opportunity for people who know about Strider uh, stuff to, 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 to pipe in. I mean, I've read a bunch of stuff about what they did dissolving their company, and I think it had something to do with separating... Uh, Mick Strider from Dwayne Dwyer uh, in terms of business and, but they're still making knives, but are they, are they semi production or are they semi custom? I don't know what the hell's going on with Strider knives. So if anyone actually knows and can tell me, is this, you know, which is going to be a new production knife, a new production knife, uh, uh, like the SNG, they'll just be making them and making them or what's the deal. I don't get it. What's up with Strider? Maybe Mick Strider would come on the show and tell me himself. <laughs> what a well, novel thought, Bob. <laughs> more, more emails. You know, that's a, I just have to keep sending out the emails because I yeah. get it. I get so many emails, too. It's like I right. can't, can't read them all. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, if you like the Knife Junkie podcast and uh, you like what Bob's doing here, uh, you know, interviewing knife makers and manufacturers, designers and all that kind of stuff. If you have an in with anybody and I uh, want to put a bug in their ear. Yeah, that would be much appreciated. We would uh, appreciate the favor. Uh, get up with Bob at Bob at the knife junkie.com or again, call the listener line at 724-466-4487. That's 724-466-4487. Again, uh, any help uh, you could provide the knife junkie in uh, getting a uh, super uh, hard to reach guest on the show yeah. would be appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll get a shout out too for what that's worth. But, uh, uh, Michael Yun of um, Cutting Edge Gear, I think it's called. Uh, he's got a cool little company. Uh, he got me the interview with um, uh, with Protech. Um, uh, mm. 
sorry, I'm, I'm having a Sunday morning moment here, but uh, he got <laughs> me that interview and uh, I was grateful because, uh, because, you know, hard interview to get. So a yeah. little, little bit of help goes a long way. And uh, we'll Absolutely. mention you and share that too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So uh, finally in uh, Knife Life News, Bob, a picture we see on the screen here, we're going to be talking about Hinderer and the XM24. Possibly my favorite folding knife of all time, the XM24. It's the four inch bladed version of the XM18, uh, which is the most common of the Hinderer knives, the XM18 and the three and a half inch blade. They also make the three inch blade, but this, the four inch is a beast. I mean, it's got a five inch handle. It's got a four inch blade and it's thick and you know you've got a knife in your pocket and in your hand when you're carrying it and it is i love it but anyway they came out with a new version of it with the um with the sheep's foot blade that they started making i think maybe two years ago and uh it's a broad blade and and with a with a tall flat grind it gets very very slicey and uh so people are very excited about this blade on this knife because now you might find with some of the XM24s, um, a little bit thicker behind the edge. It's more of a stout, you know, hard work knife and maybe not as, as dedicated to a slicey kind of cutting. And uh, so with the sheep's foot and with the way it's ground, um, that's what you can expect out of this. So it's, a, it's sort of a, a, um, a nice variation in, uh, in usage coming out of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's all long that's the long justification for saying <laughs> I want to get this thing <laughs> because it's a different, you know, if I find myself on a picnic and there's a hunk of Compte cheese and I need to slice it, this might be the thing. Right. Uh, I've heard the, the term sheep's foot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, over the year or so year and a half, you know, we've been doing the podcast almost two years. W what exactly does that mean as we're looking at this knife? Okay. So, Looking at this knife, this is technically a modified sheep's foot because the cutting edge has a belly. The cutting edge has a curve there. Uh, a normal, uh, a regular sheep's foot or traditional sheep's foot is like this. I happen to have one right here. Funny you should ask. So it's got a straight edge and, uh, and uh, this right here. This is what makes it the sheep's foot. So you got a straight edge and then you've got the um, the curve, the sh uh, sharp drop down, uh, whereas a Warncliffe would have sort of a, a more of a pointy drop down. With okay, the I'm going to bring up. I'm going to bring up that picture again, and then go full screen to you so that uh, we can kind of get a comparison. See that, and then Wait, that. let me wipe. Yes, let me wipe this off. Get it, do that again. Get it all nice and clean. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There you go. Okay. Just all right. Look. I see the difference. Yeah. This, right. by the way, is the beautiful GEC 66 calf roper in green micarta. So, yeah, that the, the Hinderer XM24, very exciting. Also, the triway pivot on the XM24 is very exciting. The triway pivot that allows you to um, use phosphor bronze washers, uh, nylon washers, or um, ball, bearing, ball bearings in the pivot. You know, um, it ships with the, with the bearing pivot in there. Uh, but you can swap them out for different feels, different right. needs. I guess if you're doing like super, if you're working in the sand, heaven forbid, uh, with your XM, uh, you would probably want to have the washers in there and not have right. the, the bearings. And okay. So All right. it's nice to have that option. And then if you're a fidgety guy and you just want to play with it and open it and close it, you leave the bearings on. Like yourself? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, Your Honor. <laughs> no, exactly. I like to I like to claim I want the more robust action, but really I just want to play with it. So. Right. All right. We'll have uh, links to these stories in Knife Life News, of course, at the knifechunky.com slash 143, the knifechunky.com slash 143. That's where we'll have the uh, the show notes, uh, links, uh, perhaps pictures of other knives and all that kind of good stuff in the show notes again at the knifechunky.com slash 143. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. All right, we are back on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, hope uh, you are enjoying this uh, video edition. If you're watching on YouTube, it's not the, uh, I was going to say static audiogram, but it's a... Uh, it's an audiogram, which, which means it's not static because it's a movie, but, but the waveforms are moving, but just the picture. So 
Hopefully you're liking this better. Again, uh, let us know. We would like to hear some comments about this as well as kind of what you do like, what you don't like, any suggestions for improvement. We're uh, all about trying to make the show as, uh, as good as it can be. So we would love to hear from you. Uh, just be gentle with me because I am a video newbie. So uh, take it easy on me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's let Bob talk. Let's let Bob bloviate. State of the collection, Bob, you trade it in a knife for something you have been wanting for a while. I did. I traded in something that I wanted for a while, had, loved, and then, okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I traded my Medford Slim Midi, uh, which was a beautiful knife, <clears throat> and I got it from Alex, from Alex's knife box. He gave me a screaming mm -hmm. deal on it, and, and uh, when I got that, I got another knife from him too. So ordinarily, this is the way I work. Ordinarily, I'd say, I, I can't get rid of that. I bought that from Alex. Right. Alex is my right. buddy. It's almost kind of like the gift thing. Can't get rid of a gift knife. Right. Uh, but in this case, I got two knives with that purchase. And the other one, uh, the Emerson Iron Dragon, means way more to me, uh, though mm -hmm. I love this uh, Slim Midi. But uh, I was, so I had it up on Blade Forums and someone came along and said, I love the Slim Midi. Can I trade you my new inbox TRM Adam? Oh, wow. And then plus some money. And I said, yes. And we did that. And so uh, sitting at my desk at work, I think, I think it came on Friday while I was hiking. Uh, is the TRM Adam. And, you know, I've been, we've had Marianne uh, Halpern right. on the show a number of times. She was on the interview. She's been on uh, th two, two or three, three. of, yeah. yeah, yeah, two of the Knife Town Halls. And uh, she's awesome. And and Three Rivers Manufacturing makes incredible knives from, from what we hear from everybody. And the one that is really in my wheelhouse is the Adam. It's got the 3.6 inch blade and, and, uh, it's just a beautiful profile and it looks like the perfect combination between total utility and and just simply beautiful aesthetics and that's that's right up my alley and plus uh the, the cool thing about most of these trm knives if not all of them is that they make it easy to swap out the scales and then they make a mm -hmm. bunch of different scales available so instead of having to disassemble the knife to change the scales you just remove a couple of top screws, take the scale off and put a new scale on. So it's a uh, right. much, much uh, more friendly to that process. But in any case, I was, uh, I was not looking for a trade. I was looking to make up some money for my birthday purchase of the uh, A2D. Um, right. I've sold a couple of others uh, in that uh, f for that purpose. Uh, but the slim midi, I was like, if I can get a, an atom out of this, I, I'd love to do that. So Got that. I can't wait to get it and uh, and then talk about it. <laughs> Show right. it off. <laughs> right. Carry because it. You, you haven't actually, you've got it, but you haven't actually got it because as you said, it was delivered to the office. So uh, we're recording this before you've had a chance to get back into the office to, to open it up and see it. So, Right, right. And uh, something I'm starting to notice is that uh, I'm trying to... Uh, whether it's consciously or not, trying to acquire knives from people I've interviewed because it's more interesting mm -hmm. to me now. And, and now it, now I'm understanding what uh, a lot of our custom knife collector friends are telling us, which is like, part of the value of these custom knives is developing a relationship with the maker, you know, during the, during the planning and the making process. And then, um, you know, then you have a bond with the maker, you have a deeper bond with the, with the, piece of work you're getting from him and uh it means more to you and and that's kind of how i'm feeling even if it's uh uh you know dave wattenberg whose name i forgot earlier from protec i have some protex now i don't want to get rid of any protex uh because right. you know i talked to him and they mean something to me now uh more than just a cool design cool knife so that's where i kind of see uh some of my collecting going right now right well, if that isn't a great reason for a knife designer or maker to come on the podcast, I don't know what is. <laughs> come on the podcast. They'll buy a knife from you. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to be on the podcast, uh, shoot Bob an email at bob at the knife .com, bob at the knife .com. All right. I, I didn't quite understand this one, Bob. Uh, Brother-in-law James birthday knife. Does that mean you got your brother-in-law James a birthday knife or did that mean the brother-in-law got you a knife? No, 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 my brother-in-law got me a knife. So this is the first well, last of night. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> last night was the first time I've seen him since uh, 
since my birthday. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel, Knives My Brother Gave Me and then Knives My Brother-in-Law Gave Me because they always both give me cool gifts. Um, but yesterday they came over and he gave me this. This is the new Gerber. This is part of their new, um, you know, kind of like how SOG has been rebranding. Gerber has been doing a bit of this in the past uh, five or so years. And this is their new knife called the Quadrant. The Quadrant. And to me, my immediate reaction is it looks like a small uh, production version of like of the Reese Whelan Slash. I don't know if you... Jim, I know you don't know what that means, but I don't, I'm not sure if the listeners are familiar with that knife. But it's it's a custom knife. I've only seen it a few times, uh, but it looks it's like this, but a lot bigger. It's like a big rectangle. It's like a big straight razor. And uh, so he gave me this. I was very excited because this is one of the knives uh, that Gerber's come out with in the past two years. And we've talked about this on the supplemental show before when it came out. And uh, it's one of the one of the Gerbers I've been excited to check out. And uh, so you got this uh, really cool, thinly ground, hollow ground, straight razory kind of blade. It's seven CR thirteen MOV or seven CR MOV. I'm not sure what the what the. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I know it's seven CR. I'm not sure what the next number is. Is what I mean. Um, so it's going to be a softer steel, but it's going to sharpen up. Uh, really quickly and it's going to be it's going to sharpen up razor sharp uh and uh and so the blade is uh, a nice thin slicey um sheep's foot that is technically a sheep's foot okay even it's not a razor right. um, let me full screen you again and and now someone might start to start to get in the weeds with me and say it's a cleaver or something else but I, i'm i'm sticking with sheep's foot on this okay so it it has a flipper as you can see and it's a steel fl uh, frame lock. It's very thin and very light. And so I carried this in my back pocket all day yesterday and frankly forgot it was there until I was like, oh yeah, I have a new knife and I'd pull it out. Uh, so it is, it is quite thin and light. Now on this side, something I really like is that bamboo inlay. This is bamboo. And I'm, I am a sucker for bamboo and rattan and jute and all those, those sorry, and all those kind of materials. And to me, that is a is a really cool incorporation of bamboo. And we have a lot of bamboo cutting boards in our kitchen. They seem to do really well. They don't uh, warp. I mean, we've had them for years. They don't warp even even when you put them in the sink and scrub them with hot water and leave them out to dry. So I'm pretty confident that the inlay on this will will stick to the handle and will not uh, over time warp and and get funky. Now the the uh, the black material there is some sort of FRN. It's deceptive. It looks a lot like the steel on the other side, but it, it's actually FRN, which is nice. It keeps it light. If that were steel, this would be a much heavier blade. And then you have their cool little logo there. Uh, the flipper is, uh, it's on phosphor bronze washers and it's going to need a little, as you can see there, and it's going to need a little bit of breaking in. Like if I give it a little bit of wrist, it'll pop open just fine. But uh, in time, those phosphor bronze washers will will polish down, and this will just be a you know without without wrist kind of flipper. Uh, one disappointment in the fit and finish in this knife is that the blade is terribly off center. And uh, let's see if let's see if you can see that way, right up against this uh, the show scale. And it's in there tight. I mean, there's there's hardly any blade play. Actually, I think I just introduced a little bit. Um, but there's hardly any blade play, so I'm not sure if tightening down that pivot is going to make a difference in recentering that blade. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to try and whisper the knife, if you will, uh, as Joe might say, but uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with the pivot a little bit, see if I can center it up. But all in all, this is a cool little uh, EDC knife. You know, if you, uh, it, it's stylish to me. To me, it looks kind of, you know, it's got kind of a retro feel to it. And, uh, you know, if you want a stylish, light, little, uh, everyday carry knife that you can uh, tote around, not worry too much about because it's the materials are not so fine, um, this is a great knife, great little knife, man. I, I, I want to uh, check out some more of the new Gerbers and see what's up because I had a, uh, I have a flat iron. And, man, uh, it's not one of the uh, improved flat irons, but uh, it... 
the knife was a big, big, big disappointment. So yeah. even though it looked cool, it was a it was a drag. But then they they changed some right. designs. I guess they listened to the the customers. But oh, okay, all right. So yeah, I want to check out more Gerber's. Let's see what 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 they're doing. So that is that a uh, front right pocket knife? No, this is a back left pocket knife. Or I can't uh, remember which. <laughs> Or well, because I like the bigger knives in my front pocket. Or, or this would be a, a good drop in the pocket knife, hmm. especially if you take off that clip. You know, it's slender, small, pretty light. You know, it's a steel frame lock, so it's not right. it's not that light. But uh, with the FRN and bamboo on the show side, really does lighten it up a bit. Hmm. Okay, all right. So, is that one of the knives that uh, maybe is in this? Um new desire of collecting or or what exactly do you mean by your taste maybe changing? I don't want to say the word yeah. evolving, but taste are changing and your, your knife desires are, are different lately. Yes. Well, yeah, actually in a, in a sense, you know, I'm, 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 uh, since we talked to Ed Calderon, I've been carrying this around all the time. This, this little rig started life as a Victorinox fruit knife. And I uh, heated up the handle and, you know, you've seen this, I've shown this, heated up the handle and bent it back and put the little notch in it, the Elvia notch. And, uh, you know, now it's a great little Pical knife. And I made a Kydex sheath for it that sits in the pocket. And then when you pull it out, you know, it snags on this and takes the So this kind of thing to me right now is fascinating. And it's a $10 knife, you know, it's, uh, um, so yeah, I, I've been, collecting these little little cheapos uh just for fun um and then so it's either a cheapo or it's a custom <laughs> right now this is not a new one uh my my attention to detail mercantile folder that i just bought for my birthday recently is what i'm referring to but this is also from him and um so i'm not saying custom or total totally cheap what i'm what i'm saying is now i'm more interested in collecting the knives of people i speak with and, um, and well, um, I, I'm not going after, and, and these kind of things just for fun. I'm not going after these right now, the Riots and, the you know, um, uh, some of this, I don't know, Jim, Jim, some of the production knives are starting to leave me cold. I, I see them and I'm like, they're beautiful. There's another beautiful one. There's another beautiful one. That one's cool. That one's cool. That one's cool. At a certain point, it's like, uh option paralysis and uh mm. so I'm, I'm starting to hone in a little bit more on my on my um on just keeping it simple what do you really like what are you going to carry i know right. i'm going to carry it if it's three and a half to four inches and is more on the tactical side and less on the decorative side and and uh you know and that's where that's where i'm i'm headed and uh i don't know it's weird because yeah. usually uh, i'm used to just wanting everything and right. now I don't want everything. So, but I think maybe that's a result of the pass around group. Now I'm getting to try things and experience them and mm -hmm. enjoy them and then pass them along like a popcorn movie in the summer. You know, it's not like, a, uh, you know, it's not Citizen Kane. You're not going to, you're not going to think about it the rest of your life. Um, but you have a chance to experience it and then send it along to someone else. All right. And then well, once you just, yes. Yeah, just I was just going to say it's it's just taking you a while to really refine and define what you want to collect, I guess, because as you said, you're a knife junkie, and it's kind of like, yeah, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that, and everything. And so it's, you know, we've we've talked for you know year and a half about reduce and refine, but mm -hmm. that refining and defining, as I as I say, is is kind of hard because there are so many knives. And you do love them and you want them, but if you're going to collect a certain style or size or maker or whatever, that's where you have to really define it. And what's the word? Uh, have some discipline, I guess, maybe in, yes. that, in, that, in that collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As Jocko Willink would say, discipline equals freedom, you know? If you discipline yourself and you don't buy every single knife that comes out, you'll have the freedom to buy a hinderer when you see that hinderer you want because you will have the money. You know, you were disciplined. You will have the freedom to buy right. that. So yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good point. Um, yeah, and 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 
you also have to think, or it's starting to occur to me, and maybe that's just because I had my birthday and I'm uh, aware of how I'm getting older, but uh, uh, you also have to think someday I'm going to kick the bucket and and <laughs> my girl's going to be left holding the bag. And, you know, I'm always like, you can have this one when I die it, to the point where they're like, daddy, can I have that one when you die? When I get a new knife? I'm like, okay, we can stop saying that now. <laughs> now it's getting a little close to home, but um, you know, you don't want to, I, I don't want to leave them with a, with a whole bunch of knives to unload. And I also don't want them to have, you know, let's just use a round number, a hundred dollars worth of knives that they sell for $10. Cause they, they're not, they right. don't know what they have and they're not so into doing all the research or whatever. Yeah, uh, a year ago, I think I, sh I shared with you a YouTube video of a, uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos. I do resell and uh, stuff like that on eBay and Amazon. And uh, I, I had a reseller that uh, had a video and he bought a collection of knives. And so I sent it to you. It's like that was at the time I was truly a newbie and didn't really know anything. And I said, you know, what do you think about this, Bob? Did he get a good deal? And why don't you kind of tell the, the quick story? Oh, I, I kind of felt like the guy should have been thrown in jail. He, he, <laughs> he, I mean, he took advantage of a grieving widow. He bought like 400 Randall knives, you know, which incidentally cost, you know, maybe 700 bucks, 800 bucks a piece for like 2000 bucks. Some, I mean, it was highway robbery. This guy must have been, he's still eating steak, man. And that, right. that poor lady is like, where'd my $400 go, you know, or where'd my $2,000 go, man. So, right. So yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, that that's a huge extrapolation out from my collection. But man, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want that to befall the the chillins. So you know, kind of bringing it down a little bit. Right. Well, it is a good lesson for uh, anybody that collects anything, knives or or any kind of you know other thing that has value to it. You do have to kind of do some estate planning and uh, you know let people know what these things are worth, at least a ballpark idea, so that. Uh, you know, unscrupulous or, or even scrupulous, uh, if that's the right word, even, you know, honorable resellers that come along, they might not know the true value either. Uh, so, you know, do yourself a favor and educate your family as to the real value and maybe even give them <laughs> some hints about where they could sell the things, that kind of thing. Jim, I'm over here biting my nails like, ah, because that's a touchy subject with knife collectors, you know? Um, I'm, I'm just going to let my wife know the full value of my collection. It's like, well, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> uh, of course, I am joking, honey, if you're watching. I know you're not. Well, but, you know, make an Excel spreadsheet or something and, yeah. you know. On the date of my death, open this up. Right, open the spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. I'm not saying, you know, you need to go. Yeah. Right now and tell your wife every time you buy a knife and hey honey, my collection is now worth thirty eight thousand dollars. You <laughs> yeah. know, but yeah. honey, do you think this is worth the five hundred dollars I just paid for it? <laughs> yeah. Great. That's not gonna happen. Right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I'm you know, some estate planning. That's all I'm yeah, that's yeah, all I'm yeah. saying. So that so in that, a time uh, capsule. Yeah, so that you, your family does not get taken advantage of like perhaps that family did or whatever, so that your yeah. collection not only will bring uh, joy to you um, in your lifetime, but maybe could provide some monetary joy to your family after you're gone. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. You know you're a knife junkie if you're as happy as a kid on Christmas morning when that new knife arrives in the mail. All right, Bob's been happy lately. His birthday celebration, which uh, was last month, man. Your birthday was last month, and we're still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's keep it that way. It's not my birthday month. It's my birthday quarter. Oh, wow. Well, so. I see. We're stretching it out now. All right. <laughs> All right. I think we have gone long enough on uh, this episode, number 143 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, it's our midweek supplemental episode where we do get a chance to uh, talk about stories, uh, knife life news, look at uh, some of Bob's knives and the state of the collection. And uh, again, adding this video piece to the midweek supplemental uh, gives us a chance to uh, actually see the knives that Bob is talking about. So if you're listening on the audio podcast, we we are still going to do that in audio. We love you and we appreciate your listening. But for our YouTube listeners, you'll now be able to uh, to watch the midweek supplemental and actually uh, see some moving pictures, as they say. So uh, <laughs> let us know what you uh, think about this uh, 
this uh, new format, if you will, for the midweek supplemental by uh, shooting us an email at bob at the knife junkie.com or calling us at the listener line at 724-466-4487. And Bob, as I always do, I give you the final word. So anything you want to wrap up here with as we are in the month of September now? Uh, no, not much. Just look for the TRM uh, I, when it comes out, when I, when I get to work, hopefully on Monday and it's there. Uh, look for a quick video on that, a first impressions, if you will. I'm really right. excited about that knife. Well, and Bob said uh, when he gets to work on Monday, of course, we record this supplemental on Sundays. So uh, if you're if you're watching it now, when it's yeah. broadcast, it's Wednesday. <laughs> so that's the reason. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for joining us on episode number 143 of the Knife Junkie podcast. I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person for the Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, saying thank you so much for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.